we have a match between a Shaolin Kempo, Shorinji Kempo. Shorinji is the Japanese word for Shaolin Shi, which is the Mandarin, or my version of Mandarin, of Shaolin Temple, Shaolin Shi. So that's Shorinji Kempo, Shaolin Kempo. The guy's name is Yuki Kondo. This is Ryuji Goto. I do not know what Siyudu is. In fact, I looked it up. I couldn't find anything related to Siyudu. So again, the rules are you have um, a few seconds on the ground. If it goes to the ground, everything goes in MMA style with the exception of elbows. Can't throw elbows. Um, this Siyudu guy just looks like he's like karate or Muay Thai. I can see our Shorinji Kempo, our Shaolin Kempo, the guy in blue. Oof, he um, slipped on that. But um, I see certain interesting block patterns and stuff, maybe reminiscent of certain Shaolin type of moves. Um, I like that he's defending against um, high kicks. like that he's using combos. I like that he keeps jabbing. There you go, catch, there you go. That was pretty good, he caught the leg, he caught the opponent's right leg and then threw a few punches. Um, still cracks me up the referee, how he is wearing that traditional garb. And so now we have Kempo guys doing well. Uh-oh, uh-oh, whoa! So they both ended up on the ground. Um, they both got thrown outside, so they both get minus 0 0.5 points. So now, I feel like our um, guy in blue needs to be a little bit, um, his kicks need to target more than the legs like that. He needs to throw more body kicks and... Because right now, I feel like his arsenal is limited. He's got to have more body kicks. Just my thought there. Um, I can see that our guy with the yellow shirt, I think his kicks are much more powerful. So they both end up on the ground again. So not the ground in the in the ring, but outside the ring. So they, they both get minus 0 0.5 points again. So they both are at minus 1. If you get minus 3, you lose. So... Not what I was expecting, man. I was expecting the Shaolin Kempo guy to kind of have lower stances and stuff. Just thinking about, like, how Shaolin fighters are portrayed in movies. And remember that Shaolin guy in Taiwan that challenged the MMA fighter, how he fought? I'm just expecting more of that, honestly. Huh. What do you guys think, man? What do you guys think? How can our Shaolin Kempo guy step it up a little? I just... I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna win this if um he keeps fighting like this. He's missing some X factor that I can't seem to pinpoint right now. So that was the end of the first round. So those are some highlights. And round two. So to his credit, he's very good at checking the kicks, right? He's always checking the kicks. And maybe those kicks he's given to uh, Ryuji, a.k.a. the guy with the yellow hair, will add up by the third round. Mm. Notice both of them are not throwing any side kicks, and both of them are not really throwing any push kicks either. They're just throwing these snap kick, these kind of like roundhouse kick type. Wonder why is that? Maybe afraid of getting your leg caught or something? I don't know. So that's the closest we get to kind of like a push kick. I've seen the Shaolin Kempo guy throw that a few times. Um, oof. Look at that. He's, um, the, Sha the Shaolin guy is blocking some punches occasionally. He's trying to trap, look at that, he's trying to trap... They're both trying to like trap each other's lead arm. You see that? I have the white noise machine going on in my room and I'm honestly about to fall asleep. The white noise machine is making me want to sleep. So, 
Um, maybe next time I do some commentary, I will refrain from turning on the white noise machine. I'm doing it, so that was a great left punch by our Shaolin Kempo guy. Uh, I turn on the white noise machine so I don't get interfered. You guys don't hear any voices in the background or anything because there's a lot of construction going on under this lockdown, which is really weird. But, so anyways, um, look at that. If you notice, both of them also have black belts. I think it's just part of the uniform. It's not like they're all, because they're all wearing the same kind of black belt. Short sleeve geese too, that's pretty cool. Kind of like a stalemate right now, man. It's kind of a stalemate. This is, this, guys, don't you guys think this looks more like a spar session than anything like that? It's not, it doesn't feel like a real fight. It's like a spar session. Maybe like a hard spar session. There you go. Take them down. Nice. Oh, he ended up. Okay, so both of them minus 0 0.5. The the um, penalty points for getting thrown out reset every round. So because it's the second round, it doesn't accumulate from the first round. First round, they both got one penalty point. So I feel like since our um both the guys, there you go. That's what I was, I was saying. Both the guys kind of have their chins all sticking out and stuff. They're not really protecting their faces as much to because they're trying to protect against kicks, right? I feel like just do what the Campbell guy just did. Just go for the face more. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about, you see. Just, like, punch the face. Look at that. The corner of the Shaolin Kempo guy said, put your hands closer to your face. You notice him. He put his hands. You see his hands are closer to his face dead. They're like, yeah, don't get punched in the face again. <laughs> so. Ooh. Throwing some hammer fist, Dude. I want to know what Siudu is, man. I literally, I was looking up online. I couldn't find anything about Siudu. Like, maybe it's translated wrong? Hmm. I don't know. So. But, um. So, the Shaolin guy is, is Southpaw. And the Siudu guy is Orthodox. And... It's always interesting to see when um, the two of them are kind of mirroring each other because usually they say it gives the southpaw an advantage. So um, shoot, those punches to the face, um, it's adding up, man. The the guy with the yellow shirt, it's right. He's he's a little slower now. He's a little maybe slightly concussed. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what he should have been doing the whole time. Our Shaolin guy. Just keep punching at the face, man. Step out, punch the face. Just use utilize kind of boxing. Because our our um our Siudo guy, um Ryuji, just doesn't have the um kind of the punch awareness and you know many systems of martial arts kind of overstress kicking. So look at that, look at that, that's what I'm talking about. Keep doing that. Yuki's gonna win this man. If he keeps doing that, if he keeps just peppering the face, he's gonna win. What do you guys think? Dude, he's totally going to win, man. He's totally going to win. I wish there was a timer. I don't know how much is left of the third round. Look at that. Like, Yeah, um, both of them were, I think, pretty evenly matched the first and second round. But I think Yuki definitely won this round. And because of that, I think they're going to give it to Yuki. What do you guys think? Also, you guys notice, besides them trying to push each other out of the ring, this fight has not ended up on the ground, like, um, in grappling, ever. So, I don't know if this was a conscious decision, or it just happened this way. Yeah, don't, don't, don't waste your time clinching. So. Huh. Yuki, just keep, keep peppering the face. There we go. That, um, Ryuji's had such a big telegraphed, um, hook, and Yuki slipped under it and then hit, um, Ryuji. That was a pretty, you know, basic boxing head movement, man. Basic boxing. Now Yuki's feeling confident. He smells blood, man. I mean, look at this. Okay, that's the end of the third round. They are definitely gonna give it to Yuki. Yuki wins. They gotta give it to Yuki, man. Yeah, he's the winner. Exactly. So... Good job, Yuki.
Look at that. <laughs> That's still my favorite movement. As Ryuji, the Siodo, aka the, the guy in, in the, with the yellow hair, he gets tired. I look at him telegraphing that left hook. Telegraph left hook. Yuki slips under it. Just one, two, one, two, one, two, peppering his face. That's probably my favorite moment out of this fight. So he throws a left hook mm -hmm. at our at our guy. Mm -hmm. So he throws it kind of like this. And then boom, yeah, he eats like a right, it's either a hook or a cross or something. Power uh, hook with the Power left. hook with the left. So again, he, he throws it, and boom, yeah. And um, his, his arms, like I threw it from here, his arms were kind of here when he threw it. Yeah. So he wasn't really, he was just kind of like this, and he kind of goes like this, and then boom, yeah, yeah, exactly. His eyes are this direction, throws his lead left hook. His eyes aren't even at his opponent. Yeah. His eyes are like over yeah. here. So I wanted to ask Rob what the guy could do to prevent him from eating counter punches. I am the guy who counters him, so I'm the southpaw, he's the orthodox. The, the southpaw guy who's the uh, Shaolin Kempo guy, mm -hmm. he's holding his hands kind of like this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, you know, not like a boxer, but kind of like this because there's kicks involved. Mm -hmm. He throws the lead. Um, so, I'm going to throw my lead left yeah, hook here. Lead. What you don't want to do is, especially later on in the fight, if you're tired and exhausted, you're going to be susceptible to counters. Mm -hmm. You do not want to throw singles. Yeah. So in the what happened in this fight, this guy threw this lead left hook mm -hmm. really sloppily. Yeah, sloppily. He went like this. Gave him a lot now of time. He, now he's looking this direction. Yeah. And the guy follows up yeah. with a power shot yeah, right like there. That. Obviously, what you want to do is you want to be cognizant of that. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that you're throwing combos. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be throwing this lead left hook as a way to close the distance, which mm -hmm. is fine. If I go here. here Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow it with my, my cross, mm -hmm. my, my strong right cross, or an elbow. Yeah. If I try, if I'm here, I close the distance, yeah. I'm yeah. come in with the, with the elbow. And in this competition, elbows are not allowed, but in like a other type of competition or a street situation, absolutely, the elbow is like essential. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's really imperative. Try not to throw singles because it makes you very susceptible to counters. Mm -hmm. In this case, he could have also... Mm -hmm. If he was throwing this lead, as soon as he goes here, mm -hmm. the appropriate thing for a hook is to bring it right back. Mm. You don't ever want to overextend. You can see that the guy, he throws, he overextends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. He's, okay. highly, he's highly dangerous uh, to here and to here. Yeah, like even if the, the Shaolin Kempo guy didn't throw that hook, mm -hmm. he could have just attacked this side of the body, did whatever, took, taken the back, etc. Yeah, so the idea for a good, a good hook... What you want to do is you want to go here and bring it right back. Mm. Try not to overextend. Definitely don't reveal your back. <laughs> and definitely be thinking like, hey, if I'm going to come in here with a power hook, mm -hmm. right, power lead hook to close the distance, mm -hmm. well, what are you going to do now that the distance is closed? Yeah, yeah. You need to follow it up. You need to follow it up with elbows, crosses, yeah. uppercuts. Yeah. This is, this is like, what you really want to do is think here. They're gonna be trying to defend their head. Yeah. Their arm. Their arms are gonna go up, mm -hmm. and then you come in with a body shot mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, definitely combos. Try to avoid single power shots where you potentially overextend and leave yourself open. Yeah, and definitely don't overthrow it to the point where you're turning your head completely, not even looking at your opponent. The idea is to strike in combinations, angle off, and escape. Close the distance. Strike in combinations, angle off, and escape. Don't ever stay on the same line that you're attacking from because as soon as you're done striking, if you remain on that line that you've attacked from, their immediate response, their intuition, is to strike where the strikes came from. So a good person to study this is uh, Lomachenko. Lomachenko will always, he'll come in, he'll pepper, and then he'll angle off and he'll, he'll uh, escape. I think that's a, a good person to sort of watch tape on. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jay. Jaybird Coffee. Hey. I looked up the two fighters, man. This is our apparent uh, Ryuji. This is Ryuji. Um, according to Tapology, he's had a few bouts. That one against Yuki Kondo seems to be the last one. And because we have this guy, I looked at Yuki. Yuki definitely is the more experienced fighter. Look at this. Yuki's had... In fact, Yuki's even fought Vanderlei Silva. So... Um, in Pride, he's fought Josh Barnett. So I think that is why um, Yuki, Yuki at least seemed to have a little bit more endurance. You know, he, he could take a lot. So now he's part of Pancrasism. 
So, last time he fought was in Pancrase. Oh, he fought Tenzo Gracie in one championship. Wow, we gotta follow this dude, man. This dude is... This dude is pretty cool. Let's definitely follow this guy. Let's look at more fights from Yuki Sora, aka Yuki. Um, what do you guys think, man? Um, he says he's a Shaolin Kempo guy. Uh, yeah, it says Kung Fu. Look at that. Um, so he's a Kung Fu fighter. Wow. I think we found some more people, man. We found some more people to follow. We have a... Since we like following... Um, traditional martial arts to see how they do. We should look more at Yuki Kondo. So... A Kung Fu fighter. And this Kung Fu fighter at least seems to know... Head movement. Basic kind of... Punching mechanics. Because after all, he's... um. Shaolin Kempo, but it's the Japanese offshoot. So, again, you can't really trust anything related to martial arts when it's being written about. But, um, I wonder how Shaolin Kempo spread to Japan. Was it through Okinawa, or was it, let's see what we can, was founded by So Din Shin. Oh, so it was in the 40s. Interesting. According to this site, Shaolin Kempo, so I thought Shaolin Kempo went to Japan way earlier. So according to this website, it was right before the communists took over China that at least this Shaolin Kempo went to Japan. Huh. That is interesting, guys. That is very interesting. Again, you have to take all this with a grain of salt, of course, right? Um, let's see if we... There are two sides, the Wu Dao, the Budo, and the... Uh, yeah, so it looks like the founder, Japanese people have been demoralized after World War II. So yeah, it was like, it, it went to Japan after World War II, but before the communist takeover of China. That's interesting. It's This is why we investigate these things, guys, because it's... We learn some things we never thought we'd learn. Okay, guys. Um, let's definitely look at some Yuki Kondo highlights in the future. This was Fight Commentary Breakdowns. Out.